Felipe Gabriel, da Recalta, primeiro episódio do Copa Felipe do Google de Brasília, primeiro episódio. Welcome to the Felipe Gabriel Encounter. Show podcast, Pedava Tony Bet. Hello, everyone. I would like to welcome to my podcast, Felipe the Encounter. This is the first time I'm doing English. The first time I'm doing a guest that's not from Latvia. So it's two Brazilian guys. I'm sure his English is better than mine. But I want to say sorry if there are some mistakes. So don't judge us. The guest of today is the future of Brazil in the Formula One. He's now competing for Aston Martin. His name is Felipe. Drogovic from Maringa. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How are you doing, man? Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm doing very well. Thank you. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here and uh, doing this podcast with you, changing some, exchanging some ideas as well. Sure, I want to say thank you to you because first, uh, first, first of all, you are my first guest of, outside of Brazil, outside of Latvia, sorry. And the first time I'm going to be speaking English. I think it's my first interview in English as well. So I hope you understand. Okay. I just want to make a disclaimer. It's really weird to talk to him. In English, yeah, so it's gonna be weird. Maybe we keep laughing at each other for for this. Yeah, so. gonna be weird, but uh, yes. Okay, you know, you know, I live in Latvia, right? Yes. So you know anything about Latvia or no? Have you no. heard about Latvia before? No, I heard about it, but before never... before meet me, you knew yeah. about Latvia before. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Why? How? Because uh, I had a close friend from Estonia. Not not close friend, but uh, he used to race with me. So because of that, I knew Latvia. What's his name? Uh, Yuri Vips. He's he's Formula Two, Formula Three now. He's no? in IndyCar now. He's in IndyCar. Yes. Okay. <coughs> there is an Estonian guy. I remember he's in Formula Two as well. No, I, I think I remember some Formula Three. I don't. There's I don't another one. There's Paul Aaron. At, yeah. Uh, but this guy is quite good. Yeah. You know anything Latvian language? No. Zero. Maybe I can teach you some words. So you can teach me. Yeah. Okay. Paul Dies. <laughs> no. <laughs> First, you tell me what it means, and I say. It means thank you, I swear to God. What is it? Pau dies. Pau dies. Yeah. Okay. Lodzu. Lodzu. Uh, it's please. Please. Labrit. Labrit. It's good morning. Okay. Labdien. Labdien. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Labvakar. What is that? Labvakar. Labvakar. Good night. Good night. Esmo Pedinch. What is that? <laughs> no, this was a joke. Was okay. But. <laughs> I could see in your face. So you feel so weird, but too bad. So I was checking a bit. Actually, it's good. It's a good podcast for me because we are friends. But uh, now is the first time I can know a little bit more about your early life. You know. Okay. So I was, you know, I made my research and I saw your like you have a roots in Europe, right? In Italy and Austria, as I exactly yes yes. Oh, so my name is Felipe. Drogovic Honkato, yeah. which is uh, uh, my great grandfather from the Drogovic name is Austrian, and the great grandfather from the Roncato is Italian. So, so when you have you raced in the in the ah, we met each other in Austria. Yes, actually, in yeah, 2021, yeah, we met 2022. 22. You you are actually you won the race or not? I don't know. No, it wasn't a really good uh, weekend for me. Oh, what a <laughs> surprise. No, sorry. But uh, so you, when you are racing Austria, you feel like you race at home or no? Because uh, you have Austria. No, I don't feel like I race at home. I feel like I feel I race at home when I'm racing In Brazil. Brazil. But, but uh, uh, no, I, I really like the place. I really like the place. There. You have it, But you have met any family that is no, still no, there? Zero, no, zero. Zero. No, no there's no one. In Italy? Uh, in Italy, no, I haven't met anyone. Really. So wait, your grand grandfather is from Austria. Uh, yes. And uh, from Italy, the same, yes. Really same, yeah. Nice. So, but yeah. if you more, but I, I haven't met them. So, and, uh, and either Italy. Yeah, and, uh, I, I only Austria. met my grandfather from each family. Sorry. Oh, ah, okay. But uh, anyway, you don't feel any connection when you go to Austria, Italy. Nothing like you feel like you know. You Italy, maybe a bit more because uh, I <clears throat> lived there for the past ten years. So I studied there, I went to school there, and I mean, I was the only uh, gringo yeah, uh, at the school. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, that was a bit strange at the beginning, but uh, after that was good. But you know, that time in East Europe, Austria, like uh, you can say that Austria, like, um, you know, maybe are the fathers or the uncles of uh, Austrian grandfathers, maybe someone come from Latvia, you never know, because yeah. at that time, like, it's really hard yeah. to, to say. I know the name is from uh, somewhere else when it was the Hungarian, uh, Austrian Hungarian Imperium, so mm -hmm. I don't know. Have you done the, the DNA part. test or no? No. No, never. No. Okay. 
<clears throat> and are you from Maringa, right? Yes. So how how was to grow up in Maringa? That's a nice city. It's <clears throat> very nice. You still go there a lot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go there probably five times a year. So to meet family, friends. There's a few friends here. Yeah. Uh, probably the chemists can't see it, but yeah. Anyway. But you um, live you live there right now or no? Where no, do you live? No, I live in Italy, close to Milan. Ah, you live in Italy. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. And uh, how, but how is Maringa? I heard I was checking there's some like cathedral or something. There. Yeah, there's uh, a cathedral uh, yeah. at the center, which is like the main place of the city yeah uh so there's not many there's not much tourism there how many people live there i think 400,000 400,000 yes so it's a good good size um you know not dangerous for brazil so that's a, a good point uh and especially i mean i think there's a lot of universities there so there's a lot of young people and there's life during the night so it's very nice city to live in do you know what i remember in maringa <clears throat> i think i told this story I uh, was in Fortaleza with my family, yeah. a business trip, a business trip, my family trip, and uh, there was some girl there that I fell in love with her. She was from Maringa. Yeah, but and, and then at the end of the story, you told me you were like 13. 15. I was 13, yeah, okay. I was 13 or 14, <laughs> but she was like 17. I think was one of the most beautiful girl I have seen that time. She was from Maringa, okay. and I remember we had a social media in Brazil. The name was Orkut, and I was looking for. <laughs> Blonde uh, in Fortaleza from Maringa <laughs> <laughs> with family, and I was trying to find her for five years. I never found her. Okay. So, so maybe now we find her. Maybe I find her. No, yeah. no, 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 I don't need it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's funny because from Maringa to the world now living Italy, how it is like a guy from Maringa now living Italy doing big things like being the a big name in Brazil. How it is for you? Like, what is the like the people that grew up with you? There was maybe some teacher in the school said, oh, you're never going to become nobody. Or some girl that dumped you on the school that they said, oh, you are nobody. And now, like, you know, they're like, look at you. Like, ah, there, there is, for sure. There's there was a teacher that told you you're not going to be nobody. Um, girls, for sure. You know, it's yeah, a bit more normal. But uh, I think teacher, there was a couple in Italy and a couple in Brazil as well. So I think it was worse in Italy than, and then in Brazil. Oh, yeah? yeah, in Brazil, they were a bit more supportive. But which year, with each age, we went to Italy? Uh, when I was 13, so 2013. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay, ah, so you had a lot of money in your childhood, you know? What? You had a lot of money in your childhood to uh, move to know. Italy with 13 years old, not so easy. I mean, uh, I wasn't working, so yeah. I guess my family was happy, you know? Uh, nice. Because I believe that the Formula One, like, uh, to be, like, it's hard to for someone. Start yeah, yeah, you a cannot, you cannot, you cannot money, yeah. get there starting with absolutely no money because it's expensive to do karting or mm -hmm. anything. But uh, if you do well in karting, then you can find sponsors and then you go from there. So, it was a private school <clears throat> in the we were studying private school in Maringa. In Maringa, yes. And in there a, was in Italy, no. There was a, a lot of kids in the Maringa that became like you know, did something big or something like that. Or you you believe that the from your age you are like doing like the best right now like from everyone else from my age i don't remember anyone else doing big things maybe there but uh, i don't i don't know nice and how it started like the you started with cart right yes. everyone started with cart. yeah everyone starts with cart. so how how it started like your father was doing this or grandfather my how family used to race a little bit they they liked it and uh yeah they raced in an amateur level i would say uh not professional um probably three of my uncles they they raced um and then they also you know they love the sport and whatever and then they then one day they asked me if I, I wanted to try one i tried it i loved it and then i just took it from there they they helped me out to keep racing and obviously at the beginning first one or two years was like a uh, like a hobby but uh, then from there on it was uh, quite serious yeah but uh, any of them uh, became a formula one driver formula two formula three no, or no? no you are the only one that became professional yeah, yeah. so are the, you are the first one to become professional for your family yeah nice i mean i can say in one of my uncles they they raced in formula truck uh quite professionally i would say and he was a champion um but yeah i think that doing great things in formula cars was the first one as me how your family your family support a lot how was your when you started the uh, when you started, your family was supporting you? Yeah, or? yeah, they were really supporting me. Um, you know, they always allow me to to race, but obviously, first of all, I had to do good in school and, you know, uh, do everything properly. If I was mm -hmm. just doing it for the sake of it, then they wouldn't allow me. But 
but because I loved it, I always did it well. So for me, it was never a problem. And uh, yeah, that was also a good thing about my family. That was, you know, you see these many fathers and mothers that they push their child to do what they wanted to be, you know. Like they, probably the father wanted to be a racing driver and then they put the, the, the son to, to drive. And then this, you can see the son doesn't want to do it. And yeah, and then it was very nice for me to, to see that my family was like, okay, you either do it properly, but if you, at some point you just don't want to do it, then you, you stop immediately and then yeah. you stop everything. You have any brothers or sisters? No, zero. <clears throat> you are the only, the only child? Yeah, it was always me and my mom uh, because I never really had a, a father. And my uncle was basically my father, my mother's sister, uh, my mother's brother. Yeah. Uh, he basically filled the place of uh, a father for me. But when did you decide or how it started the idea to become a Formula One driver? Which, which age were you mm. when you like you said, oh, maybe I can become so, like a Formula One driver? So I think... How I old are you right now? Sorry. I'm 23. 23. When I started, I was eight years old. Then I moved to... Well, then I started karting very normally not pushing too much and then at some point uh i was a brazilian champion in 2011 uh so i think from there was like the place i thought okay maybe i can do something in the sport and then brazilian so, champion sorry the kart or karting yes okay. karting in my category in karting but yeah. Uh, yeah i was a brazilian champion and then i won many more in 2012 and in 2013 i i, I actually never really thought about racing in Europe because you know you're a kid you're just like you just see what is in your hand like you don't push it you're too much and, and my uncle came to me is like if you want maybe we can try one year racing in Europe uh, and I went back and forth <coughs> and then 2014 I went to live in, in Europe nice uh, which city uh, <coughs> it's called Desenzano del Garda it's close to Milan we speak Italian as well yes. but when we when you moved there you moved by yourself or to with my mom Oh, your mom. Uh, yeah, I was lucky because I mean I'm the only child and my mom is there's no husband, so it makes sense for her to get with me. Nice, but your mom, your parents, they they go to the races. How, how, because I my see mom, more un your uncle going. But but no, that's uh, Philip Nasser's uncle that you know. Ah, he's yeah. Not, he's like my he's like an uncle for me, but he's not an uncle. Philip Nasser, uh, yeah. another Brazilian legend. Yeah, and uh, so he's you know the guy that goes with me. He's basically my manager. Um, but I mean, I consider him more of like family than than a manager, you know. Uh, but my mom, I think, used to go to every race that I, that I did. She's always very nice, and was like uh, even the last few years that I did, which was you know more than capable of going to the races normally. I was, I was asking her like, "Do you want to go?" And she's like, "Yeah, yeah, I want to go." Nice. So nice. that's a good thing. <clears throat> and uh, you started after kart. You, you went to the Formula Two straight or Formula Three? Formula. Uh, no, no. Then Formula Four, Formula Three. Ah, so, <clears throat> so how it works? We have to go. We have to do like all the process. Yeah. We have to do Formula Four, Formula Three, Formula yeah, Two. Yeah. So, Formula so one. the normal road to Formula <coughs> One would be karting. Then you do well in karting. Then you go to Formula Four. You do well in Formula Four. You go to Formula Three, Formula Two, Formula One. That's the the standard way. But for example, we have to win a Formula Four to go to the Formula no, Three. Or? No, 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 no. Because remember that... You have basically to convince a team that... Uh, you're good. You're good or you pay uh, the four times what the others are paying, basically. Yeah. yeah. A lot about money also. Yeah. yeah. But uh, and what's the difference? Where there is a biggest gap, like, for, for the, like, what, for example, between Formula Two, Formula Three, Formula Two, Formula One, what's the biggest gap? I think the biggest gaps are karting to Formula Four. Okay. And and Formula Two to Formula One. What's the difference between Formula Two and Formula One? Formula Two, you know, it's a it's a stock series, so you have the same car, the same equipment for every driver. Yeah. You know, obviously you can tune the car, so you can still make a big difference from team to team. Uh, but the, essentially, the the material that you have, the car that you have, the engine that you have, is all the same for the other cars. And in Formula One, is you're working in Formula Two, you're working with a uh, 20 people in Formula One, you're working with almost a thousand people. Yeah. So it's a, it's a big difference. Also, the way you drive is quite different. How many times do you won a Formula Two? <coughs> Races or? No, uh, championship. Oh, uh, no. Just one. You can only win one. Ah, you can uh, just win one. Yeah, once you win, you have to. But what happens if you win and. Uh... And then you find a place and you somewhere else. So that's the reason most of drivers they go to Formula Indy, Formula E, yeah. because you have to go somewhere else. Or they else. just become reserved like me. 
So, for example, if you win a Formula 3, you cannot compete in Formula 3 again. Yes. And if you win a Formula 2, you cannot compete in Formula 2 ever again. Ever again. Uh, I don't know if there is a, like a limit of year, but no one goes back after, I don't know, how many years. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> now, how, how, many, how long you are in Formula 1 already? Well, I became reserve at the end of my championship winning year, so the 22. Uh, 22. Uh, so I did like I don't know a few months at the end of the year and then 23 and then 24. And how it is for you now to be like uh, your teammate Fernando Alonso, like the yeah, it's quite cool. That's the cool. Leg, like because when he started to I I, I don't know if I'm mistaken if I'm mistaken, but when he started to race, you were not even born, right? Or no? I was one I was one year old. One year old. Yeah, when he started to race in <clears throat> Formula One. What's crazy? How, yeah. how is the relationship with him? Hey, it's quite nice. It's He's a very nice guy. He's very professional with me and well, with everyone else in the team. But uh, we don't talk much. But uh, every time I, I need to ask something to him, he's quite nice. Yeah. But you, you have really open relationship. You can go talk to him, ask things like you can. It's not like you have to see him as a, I don't know, like. A... No, no, no. I mean, I, f the more I can consider this guy is a competitor, is the better it is for me. You know, yeah, of one course. race, one more day, I need to race. I need to feel like they are competitors like uh, then uh, obviously if you're in the same team it's different yeah. you need to treat them different than other guys but still but i think he also he see you as a like his competitor right he not see like or like how it is you're uh, at the same team you see each other as like uh, teammates or more like in I, formula one because you no know, in football there's a lot of like same position like you are always like trying to yeah, yeah. In, in formula one like the at the end of the day, the worst enemy is your teammate. Yeah, right? I believe. Because the one that can harm you the most. But uh, yeah, nah. you need to be nice to him as well. I mean, you, you need to think about the team. Uh, but uh, in my case, I think it's different. My case is just, you know, I'm there, I'm a reserve driver. I, I'm 20 years old, almost 20 years old, younger than him. Mm -hmm. So it's not a problem. So yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a very different uh, relationship. And where were you and uh, how you got the, the the news you were going to Aston Martin? So I was basically on the way of winning the championship in Formula 2. Ah, okay. Uh, well, yeah. before you win the Formula 2, right? Yes, yeah. So we were, we were looking into options for the next year for if I can be, obviously you win Formula 2, you want to be in Formula 1 straight into the next year, <laughs> uh, which was not possible because of some, you know, changes in the, in the grid. But then I um, I spoke with XP, which is my main sponsor today. Ah, uh, XP was already a sponsor before. No, no, no. They were uh, talking to uh, to Aston Martin, and we when we got in the middle uh, together, you know. And then they spoke to Aston Martin. Aston Martin wanted me, so there was a, a nice deal to to join this team, also with the Brazilian sponsor. So it was a nice package. Oh, nice. But where were you at the moment you got the news? Like, uh, you remember? Uh, that? I don't know. Mm, no, I, I, I know, I know, I know. It was uh, like when it was everything was completely decided. Was in Monza when actually the weekend I won the championship. Because I mean, I, I knew a few talks and and there, but uh, yeah, uh, it was like fully closed deal in, in Monza. How is the relationship to Stroll? It's good. It's good. I mean, uh, we've been good friends. Uh, I think twenty three. We spoke a lot about the car and stuff, and yeah, yeah I think this year. Uh, Hopefully the car is good again to you know to make them do well. Um, I almost you know got the the drive when he got hurt at the beginning of the year. And, yeah, you know, all Brazil was expecting. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, I mean, to be fair, if I was him, I would, I would do exactly the same as he did. No, you, know, you, you want to race and you want to do. So for me, it's absolutely not wrong that. And yeah, I think it's nice to me. It's very professional the, the relationship we have between Fernando, me, and him. But uh, it's quite nice to think. So right now you talk more with Stroll or with Fernando? How it is? Because Stroll is younger, no? I think. Yeah, uh, yeah Stroll is like three years older than me. Two, two or three. I don't know. Um, but uh, our relationship is quite similar, to be fair. From from Fernando to him, I, I we we don't speak much. Mm -hmm. But uh, when we speak, it's very professional about the car, about the team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everyone has their own private life. Yeah, I mean, I, I think my one is less private. You know, when you get to Fernando, or even like when you become a main Formula One driver, there's so many people you know looking into you that you, you need to be a bit more private. But I think uh, we Brazilians, we are more open. Yeah, yeah, like, for me. Uh, if one day I will be there, I want to be the guy that you know shows everything and yeah, uh, just, you know. like Neymar of the Formula One. Uh, 
yeah. I mean, why not? I mean, it's <clears> quite yeah. cool to be like him. Yeah. But um, which of the drivers, uh, now I don't remember, I think I was checking, but which of the drivers of Formula 1 you were you raced before in the Formula 2 or Formula 3 or karting or... That are in Formula 1 now? That, that are in Formula 1 right now. I raced against... Uh, I remember I raced against Lando uh, yeah. when I was in karting. Okay. Uh, but he's uh, one year older and uh, I don't remember much uh, if we raced again together. Uh, to know that we raced in, in F2 together. Uh, together, yes. like uh, we are in the same team? No, 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 no. Okay. like in the same year. Okay. Um, who else? I think no one else. Maybe maybe I'm forgetting someone. But yeah. How is your relationship? I'm Piastri, yeah. Uh, Piastri, yeah, yeah. Piastri. And uh, I remember you racing with Nikita, yeah? Yeah. <clears throat> and then we, after he left, do you still talk to him or no? Like, we have, no. We have never had any relationship? No, right? no, with him, zero. I remember all the Brazilians hated him so bad after... Yeah, we had a little fight uh, on track in, in Bahrain and uh, yeah, yeah, I think the Brazilian people... I was did. in Bahrain, was it the first... The Bahrain also is the first for the Formula 2 or no? Uh, that was the... was the pandemic year, ah, so that was okay. the last race of the year. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was not uh, so nice for him because, I mean, Brazilian people, they go crazy. And, but yeah. I was uh, quite short. Sure but how it is like, for example, if something happened wh wh while you're racing, afterwards you go talk to him and say, what the fuck, why are you doing this? Like, I mean, like it, this? To, to, it depends on who it is, you know, for me to, I'm very chilled guy. Like uh, yeah. if someone does something wrong, it needs to be really wrong for me to go yeah. there and talk to him. Um, but yeah, I think what happens on track stays on track. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, nice. And, you know, if someone does something to me, it's probably gonna be a payback, but it's gonna be on track. Oh, nice! Yeah. And there is another pilot. There is for everyone there. Like, not talk about strong alone. So there is someone that have really good relationship. Like, uh, uh, I think uh, Guanyu Zhou is a. I mean, he was my teammate in Formula Two. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. another one. Uh, Guanyu Zhou, I, I I talked to him a few, a few times. Um, um, yeah, I think that's the, the guy that I talk most uh, between the drivers. Maybe Oscar Piastri as well. Piastri, yeah. I remember. I'll talk about more for, about Formula One. What's your favorite track now? Uh, Silverstone, Silverstone and Mugello. And I think Monaco because of the environment. It's quite cool. Uh, first time I heard about you, actually, I had heard before, but first time I saw you was in Monaco. I was there and you won the race. Yeah. 2022. 22, I think. yes. You won the race. And yeah. I was texting on Instagram, you didn't even answer me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bad on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, here, Brazilian Monaco shit. He, this guy gonna answer me for sure. Yeah. He didn't give me a fuck. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> okay, what do you think about uh, this year coming, 2024, your chances in Aston Martin? Well, I'm gonna be reserved again. I'm mm -hmm. gonna be, you know, waiting around on the sitting bench, uh, yeah. as I can say, um, to to drive one day. I think 25, there is gonna be quite quite a few movements in the, in the paddock uh, and the team's the driver changes and stuff like that so maybe i can get a chance there but uh yeah until then uh, i'm just gonna be focused on this i think uh one of the main things for me is just to keep racing as well i'm looking for something else to race just mm -hmm. any type of category to keep racing it would be cool like uh i saw you got uh wait let me read this <laughs> i saw you uh, offered the opportunity to test for indycar series the team i don't know if it's right it Captain Racing during the winter season after 2023 season. Why do you make the choice? Well, that's uh, maybe it's not, it's not, it's that's uh, I mean, it's, it's not really true. I mean, there's a few websites that posted that. Uh, Sorry. we had a few, we had a few talks, but uh, it was nothing really. I didn't refuse. Uh, the thing is, um, I had so many good opportunities to race in 24, mm -hmm. but because I was waiting to see if there was a place uh, in Formula One, I had to, you know, let go so many because the teams need an answer, and I was postponing the answer. So, for me, the main thing at the moment now is fully for Formula One, and then one day if I, you know, not give up, but you know, go somewhere else, then uh, I'll make this choice early, and then I can yeah. I can pick up these things. <clears throat> no, sorry, because I don't know. I'm reading a bunch of things. In yeah, 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 I was like. And I'm not gonna ask you before the interview and all the things. And uh, have you drove the Indy? 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 No, never. No, ne never. So I don't know how it look like. Like you know. uh, it's it's similar to a Formula Two car. So yeah, in terms of speed, is is you know, uh, 
in a lap time uh, circuit is is very close to Formula Two, but they race in Novos as well. That's the main difference. Mm -hmm. And in Novos they go super fast. It's like 380 kph. For real? Almost 400. Damn. And the Formula E, have you tried? Yes, I did uh, two tests last but year. But it's kind of weird, no, no, no noise. No? Yeah, it's oh. very weird at the beginning. Yeah, but the car is completely different to anything we dri we we've driven before because we always run, you know, race tires, and those are race tires, but they, they look like road tires, you know. Yeah. And they race only in street circuits. Uh, no noise. The car is quite slow, and the purpose of that is you know just being the electricity, and yeah, and that's uh, it's very different, but. It was actually fun. It was nice to drive. So there is more stock car. Have you have you have you tried? Yes, I did a race. I did a race in stock car as well. Uh, Wait, stock car is popular outside of Brazil? Or no, no? I'm no. for the racing people, but no, racing people, yeah. no, no one really knows that. Uh, there, there's more. There's more. There's another race also that's big. Indy, NASCAR. No, no, NASCAR never did. It. Never did. No. Nah, Felipe Nasser is doing NASCAR now, you know. No, he's, he's uh, in IMSA, which is the ah, prototype, okay. uh, you know, like Le Mans in, uh, in America, but he races also in Le Mans. Uh, Enzo Fittipaldi, where is he doing now the... Formula 2. Formula 2, and uh, Pietro is doing the Indy. He's doing Indy, yes. Okay. If After they go to Indy, there is a chance to go back to Formula 1, no? Yes, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not that they like you done like for the Formula 1. No, no, but the, the chances are oh. very, very small. Like if you go to, if your chances, I don't know, I don't know, fifty percent to go to Formula One now, and then you go to Indy, they become like ten percent. But <clears throat> if you do super well, maybe they, you can come back. There is one thing I just remember uh, about uh, one month ago. I was with you on this competition in Brazil, five uh, hundred miles. Yes. And I think I I told some friends outside of Brazil, nobody knew about this. Yeah. So maybe you can explain the people what you, you won the race. Yeah, yeah. Your team won the race. As I remember, it was 12 hours driving, yes? Yes. I so mean, can, can you explain what's happening? I remember it was some other legends of Brazilian Formula 1, like Barrichello, Rubio Barrichello. Felipe Massa was there, I don't remember. Uh, no, not the, not this year, but yeah, normally he comes. Yeah, but all the Brazilian big celebrities of the Formula One was there. Yeah. So can I explain a bit how it works? This so it's basically a karting race, um, which some some with some slow go karts, uh, slowish. Uh, it's like a rental car, a bit faster than rental car, but it's quite slow. Um, and we do it in three or four drivers this twelve hours. And uh, but it's just like a, a fun race to do, you know. At yeah. the end of the year, so everyone is back to Brazil. The Brazilian drivers get together and do this race, and it's quite uh, it's quite fun to do. Very long. Uh, yeah, it's twelve it's, hours, eh? Yeah, twelve hours. It's twelve or is twelve twelve or like eleven thirty or? No, it's twelve twelve. Yeah, yeah. it was uh, fully on the clock. And it's four it's four pilots in one team, right? It's uh, no, it depends. Some some sometimes sometimes just three, sometimes four. Can be but can be more than four. Can be five pilots. I don't know how is the regulations. I think maybe five drivers. Yeah. And the, each of you, for example, your team was um, Bortoleto. Bortoleto and Kai. He's just won the Formula Three. Yeah. He's now competing Formula Two, right? Yes. Who else was there? Sergio. Sergio was in the other go kart, but uh, Sergio set the camera. He drives in Formula E. Formula E. Um, Kai Cole. He's, Kai Cole he's is gonna do Indy Lights, I think. Ah, from but he was the he was doing the reserve for the McLaren, right? No, no, he was in Renault before. I ah, was Renault, before. but he wasn't on reserve. He was in the Renault Academy. Ah, okay. And you guys won the race. Yeah. And uh, how long you been? You drove like three hours? No, I, hours? I was the one that drove most, so I was quite tired. It was like six hours. Ten. Six hours driving. Yeah. And it's five hundred miles in kilometers. How much? Eight hundred. Eight hundred kilometers. Well, right around. That's crazy. After that, your back uh, wasn't hurting or something. No, like that. I was your, destroyed. Your yeah. ass. Yeah, my. I mean, the ass is. The, the, the ribs <laughs> are the, the main thing, actually. The ribs is yeah. the, the main thing, yeah? yeah. So, when you are working out, how is your routine? Like, what do you most work out in there? Like, uh, I want to know what your whole routine Like, what you have to eat, what you cannot eat, what do you have to work out more? Like, I see, like, I was checking album video yesterday. Yeah. He was working out the, the neck. Yeah. The neck, the ribs, how it, how it works. So, basically. Um, we first of all we don't train so much on track because it's by regulation and it's limited. We cannot drive the car on track, um, oh, okay. so we test very few days in the year. Uh, so the main things we do is physical preparation, which, as you said, I think the main thing for us is 
is cardiovascular, so you know aerobic stuff, mm-hmm. um, and the neck. We need to be a lot of power, mm-hmm. a lot of power in the neck, because of the G forces are crazy. You know the, the core strains as well. You go, you know, you go into a road car, you push the brakes as hard as you can. Like you see someone stop, you stop as fast as you can. You're probably gonna pull like one G, one point three G. In a Formula One car, you do six G. So yeah, the G forces are crazy. But uh, you know, after that, we do a lot of simulator work as well. That's the way we can drive at home or in the team. The team has like a big simulator. We have one mm-hmm. simulator at home as well. So um, every driver have a simulator at home. Yeah, right? yeah. So like my routine at home will be work out in the morning, work out at the, at the afternoon normally, and <clears> then <throat> the rest is just you know driving the simulator, having fun a little bit. Uh, that's it. Yeah. But for example. If you're doing, let's suppose you're doing the simulator of Suzuki, Japan, like is is similar? Is like really similar? Or like there's a big difference when like uh, you can actually practice before? Like yeah, for... yeah, it's very precise now. Oh, uh, nice. There's a few things that you need to know. It's a simulator, so you cannot do the same. Um, but yeah, it's very precise. And for you, remember the pandemic uh, time you were driving without like uh, there was no people watching. Yeah. There is a difference for you when you're driving. There is nobody watching. Yeah, there yeah, is a difference. Yeah, yeah there's a difference. Yeah. Like when there is a full circuit, like uh, it's, it's more emotions or it's, yeah, because you don't hear, you don't hear no, nobody. Uh, when you go like if you win a race and you go slow, you can see people. Yeah, shout, but, but when you're driving, you no, cannot you cannot hear no, shit. No, 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 but uh, just the visuals, you know, just see the colors and everything. Yeah, yeah. Because when you're pushing and when you're actually racing, then you just focus on track, but. Before that, you go and track slowly, and then you do the warm up and stuff like that. So you can see those kind of stuff, and it's quite cool to see. What's the worst track to drive? Belgium? No, no, Belgium's the best. No, no, Belgium. No, what? Uh, uh, Spa is Belgium, no? Yeah. No, no. Which one is the one that's the most? I think dangerous? Sochi for me is the one I. Hate. Sochi. Yeah, but luckily we don't go there anymore. It's not the Spa, the one that's dangerous, like the one that. The, yeah, it's uh, a bit dangerous. Yeah. So for you, like, is like more because remember they want to cancel, no? They spot. Yeah, yeah. Oh, in 2019, the Antoine Hubert he, he died in Formula yeah. Two there, so it's quite dangerous. Um, but yeah, it's it happens. You know, touch wood happens one time uh, in yeah, a yeah, long yeah. time. But you know, it's a very nice track. It's it's very old school, uh, very long, the longest yeah. track we have. Uh, but it's very historical. There's a lot of history in the tracks, so it's very cool. Nicest, like, I don't know, celebrity went to the to the garage or something like. Uh... Uh, yeah, I think it was in uh, Austin, 2022. Mm. Uh, Brad Pitt was there in Brad our Pitt. in our box. Yeah. You spoke uh, to him. I mean, I said hello <laughs> this way, like, uh, as at the briefing at the beginning of the uh, the weekend. We do the briefing with all the engineers and it's very serious. And at the end of the briefing, the team manager, he just joked like, and did the job well because Brad Pitt is going to be watching in our box in the race. I was like, okay, he's going to be there in the race now. And then first practice, I go there. I'm like, first practice, you know, I'm not driving. So I'm just, you know, standing around, just leaning against the, the wall. And then I just, you know, lean, lean a bit more like this. And then the wall just you know, shakes a bit. I was like, oh shit. I just turn around and he's there like really, in my ear like this, I was like, hello. <laughs> no. But uh, I don't know who else. Po- you, took, you took picture to him or no? Uh, no, I didn't. I'm, I'm not the guy. Like I know yeah. how boring it might be. Like I prefer to get to know the guy and not ask a picture. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's good. But yeah. uh, the other hand, that people are there to see you. Like so, it's like uh, I know, I know, no. But you are part of this. The same. Yeah, my like, Brad Pitt is not there to see me. So it's, no, yeah. but he's there. You are part of the race. It's the same. Let like, I'm going to a football game and the Neymar is not playing. But anyway, I'm there because of the the yeah, environment, okay, something okay. like that. But um, but any funny thing happened, paddock, something like funny, or not even a paddock, something with another drivers or something like. Uh, mm. Uh, also with Fernando, I think was uh, when he joined the team in 2022 as well. He was, um, you know, I was like, okay, I'm gonna be at the end of the year. We had this, um, we had this postseason test day, uh, which he was going to be one car, and I was on the other car, and then I drove that car in the FP1 session that weekend, 
Uh, so I for 40 minutes. So I, it was the first time I was driving a Formula One car. So I had no idea what I was doing there. Where, was where was that? In Abu Dhabi. And then uh, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna drive with Fernando. I knew Fernando already from before. I, I talked, but it was you know, still it's Fernando. Um, and then he get there, and at some point, like, I find myself just asking, or just answering his questions. Like, he's <laughs> like, so Felipe, how's the car feeling? And he, what is that? I was, and I was like, after three or four questions, I was like, that's me who's supposed to be asking you, <laughs> not you asking me these questions. Like, you know, why, why are you asking me? You have 20 years of, of Formula One, you shouldn't be asking me. And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah true, true. But, uh, <laughs> but it's, quite, it's also nice to see, like, he's very, you know, pushing. He's, yeah. he's quite a fun guy. Every race where there's some celebrity, the, the team is, like, warning you that who is coming or no? Mm, they know. If I ask, they know. But no, it's not like a problem. It's not like they are warning because it's no yeah. good for us. Yeah. Mm, no, but uh, if I ask, they, they they will tell me. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you were in Las Vegas or no? No. I no. met you when it was Abu Dhabi. Yeah. Abu Dhabi, you did the. Um, I don't remember now. But uh, you you had the best time, no? You were driving. Was it Abu Dhabi? Yeah, yeah, I was P2 in the FP1 session. Yeah, P2. Yeah. But how works this? We have some funny stories after the, uh, the weekend there. Yeah. So you can yeah. share maybe. But, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have some funny stories, but I don't know if I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. But uh, no, Abu Dhabi is always fun. Yeah. And uh, we, are, we, we, had, we, we had fun in Abu Dhabi, yeah. But uh, we can say that Abu Dhabi is one of your favorite, favorite like, uh, I'm not being track, but uh, favorite races or no? Yeah, I think it's a very nice place. Yeah, I like the place. As if well. you have to choose between Brazil and Abu Dhabi, Brazil, uh, Miami or, or, or Vegas, I didn't go to Vegas, uh, but uh, but Luka. you have to choose if you have, you have to go to, between Miami, or Miami, Vegas. Spa or Baku, Spa, big time, Spa or Brazil, Brazil. So Brazil, like no, okay, the environment of Brazil, like for sure, yeah, for yeah, you the yeah, best. Yeah. Like the Crazy. picture, the picture with you with the fans. Yeah, it's just uh, ridiculous. I can't wait for you for the next time to be like driving in Brazil. You know? Yeah. Right. How how it is? You think like um, how confident you are that you can drive the Formula One right now? It's difficult to put you know a perspective on this. It depends on the others. To be fair, how the grid is gonna change if someone is gonna pull out or mm -hmm. stuff like that. So at the moment, I. Totally don't think about it. I just do my job. In Formula One, like things change all the time, right? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if someone moves, then the whole grid is gonna move. You know, because then someone else is gonna go to that team and just changes everything. You you think your life changed after you after Formula you left Formula Two went to Formula One? What's changed for you? Like, like yeah, I think many things have changed. You know, it started to be first of all, you start to be a fully professional mm -hmm. driver. You know, um, you, you take it. Not, I wouldn't say more seriously, but you take it more like as a a job than actually a passion. If I if you understand what I mean, like mm -hmm. it, it starts to be a job as well, not only a, like a passion that you do everything for that, and um, which is cool, which I like, you know, to be very serious and you have this uh, commitment to it. Um, and after, uh, I think there's a lot more fans, a lot of more people following as well, so that's cool. And obviously, you're driving a Formula One car, which is the dream for every young driver yeah, of course. since the start. So it's just every time you jump in the car, it's a dream come true. There is, there is any ritual or something you do before the race? Something that you have to do every race? I don't know. You know we are Brazilians, we are really religious. Maybe you do something like uh, about religion or something like. Uh... Yeah, so the thing, my uh, pre race routine would be you know, get to the track, briefing with the engineers. And then from there, uh, I go warm up. I do some physical exercises with my with my trainer just to get myself warmed up. Uh, get changed from there on, uh, some stretching and stuff like that. Uh, you know, always drink a lot of water, then get to the car. Jump in the car, always from the left. That's uh, something from me. I think you step with the right foot in the car. So. Uh, this is like we go in the, in the yeah. football pitch, eh? And um, then, yeah, then, I mean, before that, I, try, I like to meditate as well, uh, just to breathe a little bit, like five minutes. You do it by yourself or do it with your coach? No, I do it by myself. I have a, a coach, but he's not coming to the races. He's Brazilian? He's Brazilian, yes. 
Okay, yeah. I'm, gonna sh I'm gonna show you one picture. And then pray a little bit, yeah. So, this picture here. Yeah. So, who do you think paid the bill? Louis. This Louis? Yeah. Why? Because he's the, the grandfather of the of the grid, you know? I think yeah. he's the, if someone has to pay, like only one guy has to pay the bill, then it has to be him, I guess. But when you go out between the pilots, you have this thing, because remember in the NBA, where I go out my NBA friends, that there's this thing that like the older always pay like for the rookies or the younger. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't know, Formula 1 has the same, like you go to dinner, you have to... to I, never, I mean, to be fair, I've never been with these guys. With the but uh, I don't know if you... And have two guys, like the, the younger guys, we just pay for each other. I mean, we just... Each one pays it. Pays so if one. you're going to dinner, you, Alonso and Strong, who going to pay the bill? <laughs> I guess not me, because they are, have a lot more money than me. Actually, but... <laughs> this, this guy, he hate pays the bill, man. He hate pays the bill. Yeah, I have a lot of stories. Yeah, he him. invites me to go to dinner, and then he wants me to pay the bill. No. <laughs> Bro, this but, guy put me in so many situations that I'm like... Shit. But uh, I, I would say Fernando, I guess. Has lost his, his main guy, no? Yeah. I forgot his name. Gunther. Gunther. Steiner. Why do you think he, he just left like like that? Or you think... Uh, I don't know. For what I read, it was because of Gene Haas. And he's the owner of... Actual owner of Haas. And yeah, he was uh, not being so happy with uh, the results. Who you think gonna be at his place? It's gonna be the the Japanese guy. The um, I I, uh, for, I forgot his name. But, uh, the guy was just under the technical director before. Sure, sure. I always hope it would be that the guy who was with us in Abu Dhabi. I forgot his name. Odmar. 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 Odmar, 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 Odmar is funny. Yeah. I was expected to be him. I said, oh my god, it should be so nice. The most important question on my podcast right now. Okay. When you coming to Latvia? Okay. Well, first of all, you need to invite me. I've been inviting you for the past two years, but okay. No, you didn't do like a proper invitation, just to be clear. Okay, with everyone. now I'm inviting you. Okay. March. Uh, March? Uh, okay, no, come, come in summer. Come in summer. Okay. Yeah. okay. Deal? Deal? Deal. Oh, deal. In the race world, there is like in the football world, there is girls that is... I knew you were going to come. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were gonna ask me. <laughs> There's girls that like uh, they were they are well known like between the pilots, you know, like they are like uh, going to pilot to pilots, you know, like I don't know. In Brazil, we say like Maria Gasolina, maybe. Yeah. I don't know if there is this word in English, Mary Gasoline. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I actually don't know if there's like a name for that, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, there is this type of girls, yes, for sure. Well, I know one that have been in between. Uh, a lot, there, yeah. You know, like, uh, we're not gonna say it. I'm not so. gonna say her name. Yeah, yeah. of course. Because I still wait for my turn. No, no, I'm joking. No, I'm joking. But uh, like, uh, talk about like nightlife. Yes. Which country, like, which like country more enjoying, like, when you're Brazil. Brazil. 100%. No, okay, outside of Brazil, there's no outside there's no place like Brazil, man. Like, yeah. uh, um. I actually don't go out much outside of Brazil. Like when I go back there, I stay m more inside. Uh, Why? I don't know, because I try to separate a little bit. You know, when I go there, I be a bit more, obviously I go out, but uh, not very frequently. Um, but uh, I prefer to be more focused there. And then when I go back to Brazil, it's just, you know, relax. So then yeah. I go out and stuff like that. But uh, like for the off season, there is maybe a place you, you go, you say, oh my God, this place is fine. I have to go back here where I'm on vacation. Something like, okay, don't don't say like Miami or those places popular. Say something. I really like Milan. 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 Okay, but you live there in Italy. Yeah, but still. And you speak Italian, somewhere in London. Like, London. Okay, no. not Baku, Azerbaijan, maybe. No. I never never gone out in Baku. Never gone out. In... Ah, so when you are the Formula One reserve, you don't go to the other race. You no, go... no, I never gone partying there. Ah, okay, but you've been yeah. there, Baku. Yeah, yeah. It's not like uh, you, you say, oh, there's some nice girls in the airport working or something like uh, there's some on the city you'll say, oh, this place is nice. No, I don't go out much. When I'm, during the weekends, I don't go out much. Yeah. Bro, why actually talk about girls? Why? Aston Martin, he just hired like hot girls, eh? <laughs> <laughs> why? They, they just like, uh, they, they do like, they, there's a law, like they just hire like hot girls. Eh? I don't know. Maybe they pay well. They pay well, yeah? I don't know. Because for the other teams, 
like Aston Martin have the hottest girl like uh, in the Formula One. You're the guy that you know goes in each team. No, no, no. <laughs> Just looking for. A I'm owner. scouting. You know, I'm you scout. scouting. No, but uh, everyone it. says like uh, I have people here to also uh, to agree with me. Yeah. Like why Aston Martin? Like they have like. Oh, yeah, they had, for what I know, they don't have anything. It's just coincidence. But uh, just coincidence. Yeah, yeah. they don't yeah, because uh, maybe, maybe they do. I don't know. There is, there is a. I know that for example in the NBA, like for you, Oh, now I ask you the questions. Okay. For you, which race is the best to go party to go out? Actually, because I know. I mean, for me, when I go to the races, I try to, you know, until qualifying. I have to be ready to race, you know, because after qualifying, I cannot replace anymore. But until then, I need to be, you know, focused, I'm sleeping early, sleeping a lot. You don't sleep probably an hour during the whole weekend. <laughs> so, <laughs> which one is the, uh, the best? Like, the Okay, one? it's because, you know, you're in the position that you are, like, soon you're going to be, like, if, uh, inshallah, you're going to be, like, the, soon you're going to be the main driver. But it's because, like, I think it's easier for the main drivers because I part a lot of the main drivers. Like, yeah. I part more of the main drivers than I part with you. Because yeah. I know we have more responsibility. Like, to be, like, uh, have to be a good guy. And you are a good guy also, you know. Yeah. But uh, I think uh, the best fun I had was in Austin. Austin. If you Austin, I'm doing, doing... I mean, I went out for dinner. That's bro, it. Bro, if you ask all the drivers... Yeah. Like 2019, if you ask, if you ask like uh, about yeah. me, like they're gonna remember the party I yeah. did in in Austin. But I don't. Know, I like Monaco. I like Monaco. It was good fun in Monaco. Las Vegas was nice. Yeah, Austin was a. There's a funny story. I'm not gonna say the name, but uh, there's this other driver which was not racing that weekend. Uh, but uh, yeah, he he got to the Sunday and we went to the track. I got to the hotel entrance and he was there with, you know, sunglasses in the morning at 7 a.m. And I asked him, and then he asked me, he was like, hey, Felipe, how was your night? I was like, fine, I slept eight hours, it was, it was good. <laughs> Which and city was that? Austin. Austin. And then he was, and I was like, and how's yours? And he was like, yeah, mate, I just came back <laughs> like 15 <laughs> minutes ago and with sunglasses on, just fully ready to to go to the track you know so it's quite funny i knew it was uh, a good place to go austin las vegas monaco is nice austria monaco i've gone out yeah yeah um, monaco because i nice. won there so i needed yeah, to yeah, yeah, it was you didn't even invite me but okay austria austria is boring actually it's a boring race turkey is terrible thanks god they took out uh brazil is the best for mm. sure mm. for sure brazil like I think Vegas and Monaco maybe is in the second position, but Brazil like way ahead of all of them. Yeah. Singapore is nice. Yeah. Singapore is really nice also. Singapore is crazy actually. I don't know, man. Hard to say, but um, Abu top... Dhabi. Where do you, where where do you rank Abu Dhabi yeah. from your perspective? Bro, it's because Abu Dhabi have really good connections there, so it's different. But I think Brazil first. Las Vegas and Monaco in second position. Abu Dhabi the third position. Singapore the fourth position. Fifth one. Austin. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Singapore fifth one, Barcelona fourth one. Okay. Barcelona's. You were with me, Barcelona? All right, we saw each other, but. Uh, we, uh, ah, I took my Hikel out. Yeah. Shit, man. Barcelona's crazy, man. Bro, but, but I don't know. Actually, Formula One for me, Formula One is the best activity for me. You know, like <laughs> guys, well, guys are blessed, man. He, he, he doesn't even know who's winning. You know? I don't know. Actually, <laughs> I, I remember I was in the Aston Martin. I was with you. I was I'm not with you. I was with the, your manager watching the Aston Martin in the Aston Martin garage. Yeah. I was in the um, watching the race in Brazil, and the, you know Alonso was competing with the. Almost was almost getting the second position. It was really yeah, nice. Yeah, like yeah. everybody was there cheering, and and I was here like dealing with the parties. You know, yeah, like yeah. that was <laughs> happening. But you know, but sometimes like so much things going on because for me, for for real guys, Formula One. I follow like football, NBA, but there's nothing like Formula One. You know, like the people that I go wa watch the Formula One, they actually I always I got the best the best you know space. You know, like as a paddock, like, but. Uh, you guys are blessed to be like uh, to 
like you know your job is competing formula one you know because football and basketball we have like millions of players yeah you are like 30 20 no no okay yeah with the, the reserves, reserves yeah, yeah we do 30 yeah. 30 yeah. yeah so like we're really blessed and then i think yeah. because of netflix like yeah. it's more and more popular yeah so it's really nice. yeah after netflix from one just took off after 2018 19 it just took off massively it's really nice you have some another question for me no no <laughs> <laughs> but do you agree with me this top five or no i don't know all of them but yeah i think i've gone out when i won monaco but okay, Sunday. which country is hot, the hottest girl? Country. Uh, the co- country, yeah. This podcast is turning into... <laughs> uh, I don't know. No, don't uh, say Brazil. Uh, of, out of the ones we go to or yeah, can yeah, be yeah. another one? No. Okay, say the one that we go to and the summer vacation, maybe Greece or something like that. You know. Sweden? Sweden. I think they are beautiful there. Yeah. Um, and uh, what else? I think Spain is nice. Huh? Spain is nice. Barcelona, I think you you didn't race in Barcelona, yeah? I uh, raced in Formula Two, and I was there this year as well. This year as well. Yeah. Huh? You're going there this year as well. Yeah. You already know your schedule for this year? No, not yet. Not not, not the ones I'm going to. Do. But uh, it's probably okay. going to be similar to last year. Probably. Yeah. Then we're gonna figure out which one is the closest to Latvia, so you can okay. pay me a visit. Okay. And uh, okay, thank you, thank you for coming. There thank is something you else you want to say? Maybe say some for the Latvian kids that they are driving the car thing right now, because I I don't think in Latvia you didn't have any guy in the Formula Four. We have a guy, we have a really good guy now. Yeah. Um, I think he's gonna be in the Formula Four this year. I don't know, I I forgot his name, but there's a young guy, and there's a girl actually, Patricia. Yeah. She's a racer. She's a living German. She's okay. She's good as well. But something maybe you can say to the Latvian kids that are, and also for the Brazilian ones that yeah, are. Yeah, I think you know, just to follow their dreams, especially like if you if you like racing, if you if you don't know if you like or not, go to the place you you told me. What is it called? The karting track. Uh, Kandava. Kandava. Yeah, go to Kandava. Try the go-karts if you like it, and yeah, keep pushing for, for your dreams as well. I think nothing comes uh, for free. Mm-hmm. You need to really work for it. But uh, yeah, if you if you really like it, then you need to push for it. Nice. Almost made me cry, man. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> That's beautiful, man. So nice to see you. Yeah. Two Philips. You are there watching from Latvia. You know the tradition. Two Philips. Together we can make a wish. So make a wish right now. And uh, my wish is for you to come to Latvia this year. Yes, thank and, you very uh, much. You remember the word that I taught you in the beginning of the podcast? No. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I ruined the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Dietz. That's thank you. That's thank you. Yeah. yeah. Paul Dietz, Latvia. Take a miss What is that? I'll see you soon, I swear. What is that? Yeah, no, take a miss this. Take a miss this. Take a miss this. Okay. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you. This was Felipe Drogovic from Brazil. See you guys soon in Latvia, and they're gonna show him the best place in Old Town. Vets, they're gonna make their copa poly bomb. Now, I butch us. Take a minute, knock my episode. Welcome to the Felipe Gabriel Encounter. Show podcast, Pedava Tony Bet.